Germany's great springtime offensive had been planned as a series of pushes, each with its own set of strategic objectives. On April 4th, the second phase began, with 15 divisions overrunning the town of Hamel and capturing its important heights. This was to be a prelude to their immediate goal of a drive on Amiens through the region just north of the Somme, an area defended by British and Australian troops. On April 1st, the British had absorbed their Royal Flying Corps and Royal Naval Air Service into a new branch called the Royal Air Force. The new service placed all the flying units on the Western Front under one central command, and its leaders, determined to avoid the slaughter of the previous April, were exploiting the advantages offered by better airplanes flying in larger formations. The pilots of Yad Geshvada 1, thrust into the thick of fighting around the Somme region, found themselves for the first time fighting at a disadvantage. While the Fokker triplane had demonstrated remarkable maneuverability, it was outclassed by both the SE-5As and the Sopwith Camels that the British were using in greater and greater numbers. The delivery of Anthony Fokker's newest biplane fighter was being awaited with great anticipation, but as of yet, none had arrived at the front. In early April, von Richthofen and JG-1 took up their newest residence at Cappy Airfield, located just 10 minutes behind the front lines. Von Richthofen was still leading his circus over the front on an almost daily basis, but the fierceness of the battle, coupled with his increased administrative duties, were beginning to take its toll. His wounding during the previous July had come back to haunt him in the form of severe headaches, and he grew increasingly irritable and outwardly grim. The first week of April added four British machines to his victory score, including a pair of Sopwith camels that he forced down on the 7th. Manfred von Richthofen's tally now stood at 78 kills. Just as Oswald Bolka had striven to find and cultivate the most promising talent for his squadron, von Richthofen continued the tradition and had no qualms about pirating the best up-and-coming flyers from other units. In March, he had invited Ernst Udet to join his elite unit. Remembered as one of the most charismatic young men serving in the German air service, Udet had been born in 1896 at Frankfurt am Main, the son of a wealthy landowner. When war began, Udet, then 17, had managed to enlist in the army, where he served as a motorcycle messenger in Belgium until a road accident landed him in the hospital for 10 days. During the brief leave that accompanied his discharge from the hospital, he applied for transfer to aviation, and after earning his pilot certificate, spent the next year chauffeuring two-seaters over the front. Udet's tenacity in two-seat machines earned him an Iron Cross first class and an advancement to Yasta 37, flying Albatross scouts. By March 23rd, when von Richthofen invited Ernst Udet to join JG-1, the not yet 22-year-old pilot was one of the Fatherland's most promising aces, with 20 confirmed victories and the poor Lemerit hanging from his neck. The next day, Udet was given command of Yasta 4, where he immediately began to mount an impressive score of victories that would eventually rank him second on the list of German aces. On April 20th, von Richthofen was leading an early evening patrol comprised of six Fokkers when he ran into a large formation of Sopwith camels belonging to RAF Squadron No. 3. Within three minutes, Manfred had downed two of the enemy machines. The first kill, the Baron's 79th victory, was scored over the 24-year-old Major Richard Raymond Barker, whose camel fell in flames incinerating its pilot so completely that Raymond Barker's body was never recovered. The second camel to fall to von Richthofen's guns during that fight also caught fire, but its pilot, 2nd Lieutenant David G. Lewis, somehow managed to survive the subsequent crash, which occurred not 50 meters from the burning wreckage of Raymond Barker's machine. As Lewis stood between the two burning wrecks, von Richthofen flew past the British pilot and waved. Neither men could have known that David Lewis would be Manfred von Richthofen's last victory. April 21st dawned with Cappy Airfield blanketed under thick fog. As the pilots of Yasta 11 waited for the fog to lift, von Richthofen was in high spirits. The previous evening's celebration of his 79th and 80th victories had carried well into the night, and he now stood joking with his men and playing with Moritz, his great Dane. It had been suggested that von Richthofen would retire from combat upon achieving his 80th kill, but he himself had nixed the idea, stating that 100 victories would be a far better number to cap his career and retire him from active flying. 
By 10.30 a.m., the fog had lifted enough to allow the squadron to take to the air, and with the Baron at the lead, the Fokker triplanes of Yasta 11 climbed away from Cappy and headed towards the front.